Let's take a look at embedded data and how it can be used in the experiment tree. First, let's just preview this task so that we get an idea of what's happening. In this task, you will categorize images of vehicles and animals into their appropriate categories using the response button options. The active response embedded data settings have all been set to capture your score and score your responses. At the end of the trial, you'll see your scores. So all the embedded data should be set to zero at the beginning. So our current embedded data is zero, 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 zero. We're then going to answer the questions and we're going to try and get them all right. Vehicle, animal, vehicle, vehicle, animal, animal, vehicle. So we can see my most recent answer was vehicle. The correct answer is eight. Uh, I had eight correct answers, no incorrect answers. Um, the total answer count was eight, and so my percentage was 100%. Great. So how was this set up in the task? At the beginning, we showed the embedded data, most recent answer is, and this is how you access embedded data, dollar dollar, open curly bracket, and then you write the name of the variable that you're storing the data in, and I'll show you that in a minute. We've done that for all of the variables. And then here on the trial, where we're showing the image and I'm selecting between animal and vehicle, we've set as static settings these variable names recent answer, correct count, incorrect count, total count, and percent PC. And those are the same variable names that we're using in here. Correct count, incorrect count, total count, and percent PC. And then at the very end, we're doing the same thing. We're showing how these values have changed. Correct count, incorrect count, total count, and percentage PC. So we're just accessing the embedded data as we go through, the uh, once we get to the end of the task. So that's fine, that's how you do this with static content. Let's see what that would look like in a tree setting. So here's my tree setting. Let's just update this to the latest versions. I need to edit this. Okay, so in this tree, we're going to do that task that we've just looked at, but we're going to do it twice. And see if you can make a prediction what will happen here when we look at the embedded data at the start of this second task. Same as before, everything's set to zero. Let's see if I can get them all right. Vehicle. Vehicle, vehicle, animal, vehicle, animal, animal, animal. So 808 and 100%. Yay! Now we're going to do the task again. So have you made your prediction? The embedded data should all be set to zero, but it isn't. Because we're using the same variable names, it's remembered what it was from before. Now I'm going to try and get them all wrong. Vehicle, vehicle, animal, vehicle, vehicle, animal, animal, animal. Right. So now the first time I got them all right, the second time I got them all wrong. So you can see I got eight right, eight wrong. The total, I've got 16 in total and my percentage is 50%. So that was because we didn't reset the names or we didn't use, or more appropriately, we didn't use different variable names for the second time we went through the task. So let's see how we could set that up in Gorilla. So here I have the same task, but set up as, um, with the embedded data set up as a manipulation. So let's go and see the critical screen here where we're getting our answers. Rather than these having being static, they're set up as a manipulation. Um, and so they're called recent answer, correct count, incorrect count, total count, and percentage count. And I will set the manipulation to be actually called recent answer with a one at the end. One, one, total count one, and percentage count one. And this means in the task structure here, 
I'm going it's going to show the embedded data for that minute for the setting of that manipulation recent answer one and here in introduction two it's going to show it for recent answer two and when I look at my spreadsheet I've actually set up two spreadsheets one that looks at introduction and n and the other one that looks at introduction two and end two and they're looking for two different sets of variable names right so let's have a look through this the first time we go through we're going to go through spreadsheet we're going to use spreadsheet one and use these manipulation these variable names in our manipulations with a one at the end and the second time we're going to use the spreadsheet ed2 and we're going to use these variable names for our manipulations all with a two at the end so there shouldn't be any overlap anymore all set to zero uh, and I got those all right and when we go into the next task they're all set to zero again and now let's see if I can get these all wrong oh I forgot. got it right in the end um, but it was at least you can see it's different um, so hopefully that's um, clear how you can use different variable names in the experiment tree.